the performance of a processor is dependent on a number of factors. Let's have a look at some of these. Let's first consider the control unit. Remember the control unit is responsible for synchronising the communication around the CPU. So the program counter, to the memory address register, the address bus, the data bus, the memory data register, to the current instruction register, decode, back to the memory address register, and so on and so on. Now obviously the quicker you can carry out this cycle, the more instructions that you can process in a given amount of time. The control unit uses a clock and its speed is measured in hertz. That's the number of cycles per second. It stands to reason that the more cycles you can do in a given amount of time, the faster the processor will be. Increasing the clock speed comes at a price because the quicker you move things around the CPU, the more heat is generated. And therefore, today's computers have to be cooled with a heat sink and a fan. Some computers are water cooled and some may even be oil cooled. But increasing the clock speed definitely makes your computer faster. So today's computers are measured in billions of cycles a second or gigahertz. Now something else you might have noticed in the fetch decode execute cycle is the memory data register is only holding one value. And that's a bit of a problem because it means if you're going to execute the same instructions again, perhaps because they're in a loop, or if you want to use the same piece of data again, then you've got a problem because you have to fetch it every single time. The solution to the problem is very simple. As instructions and data come through the data bus, just keep hold of a copy of them in something called the cache. The cache is just a small piece of memory inside the processor and it means when you want to get an instruction or a piece of data, look in the cache first to see if it's already there and if it is, it means you don't need to go and do a memory read to refetch that instruction or piece of data. Now finally, what about the whole CPU itself? What if we could have multiple copies of the CPU all working at the same time? Well, that would certainly speed up your processor, and that is how modern computers work. For example, if we could take the lid off a typical quad-core processor, it would look something like this. You may not spot it straight away, but these four areas of this uh, central processing unit are all very, very similar. That is because they are four separate processors on one chip a quad core. Of course this makes the circuitry much more complicated and you have to be able to take advantage of having multiple processors in the program in order to gain the maximum amount of speed from it. But nonetheless increasing the number of cores is going to have a dramatic effect on the speed of your processor.